So welcome. I'm glad you're here. Come join the circle. I'm wondering who else you brought with you. I know we've got a couple of people in the circle today. So I'm glad you're here. Now looking at the church calendar, we have just been through the season of Easter, all these white Sundays. Oh, and last week was Pentecost. That's hot. And this week, we're moving the hand of the calendar onto this week, the first Sunday after Pentecost, which is white here because in our church, we call this Trinity Sunday. And it's a white Sunday. And it's connected to the idea of Pentecost. And that's why we celebrate it at this time of year. I'm going to move that over. And get started. So, getting your body ready, your eyes, ears, your voice ready, and your hearts. There was once someone who said such wonderful things and did such amazing things that people began to follow him. And as they followed him, they wondered who he was. And they couldn't help themselves. They just had to ask. And one of the times when they asked, he said, I am the light. Let's enjoy the light. I see the love of God in you, the light of Christ comes shining through, and I am blessed to be with you, O holy child of God. But this light didn't stay in that one time and in that one place, because he changed the light so it could be in all places and in all times. So it could be here with us today. Watch as I change the light. There it goes. It's changing. It's going up. It's filling the room. It's going up to where you are. So that wherever we are today in godly play, this light is with us. And when we leave this place, the light will go with us too. So you ready for a story? <laughs> this is the mystery of Pentecost. Hmm. I wonder what's inside. It looks like a parable box, except, well, it's red. Hmm. Maybe it's like a parable, but not really a parable. Hmm. I wonder. I know. Why don't we look inside? See what's there. Well, <laughs> wow. red again. There's more things inside the box, but nothing else to help us get ready. So let's just start. Once there was a great tower. The people who were building the tower worked together and they all spoke the same language. But as the tower grew, they began to speak differently.
as the tower grew taller, they began to forget why they were building it, that they were trying to become closer to God. Instead, they began to feel proud of their own building. In fact, they began to think that they were better builders than God. And each group thought they were build better builders than the other group. And they all were starting to speak different languages. Soon their talking was replaced with a great noise. It made no sense. It was like babbling. And finally, the tower fell over. The beautiful language of the people was shattered splintered into many pieces. Each piece was beautiful, but it was still broken. Hmm. Thousands of years passed. Jesus died on the cross, but he was still with them as he is with us today in a different way. They kept seeing him and they wanted to hold him close. The disciples were gathered in Jerusalem. Here they are. James, Philip, Peter, John, James the Less, Matthew, Simon the Zealot, Bartholomew, Jude, Andrew, and Thomas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There were only eleven because Judas had already killed himself. And one day when they were together in the room, Jesus came to them and took them out of Jerusalem near Bethany, to the Mount of Olivet. Jesus looked at each one of them and blessed them. And then he rose up. And soon the Holy Spirit would come down. <laughs> well, the disciples returned to, to Jerusalem and they went to the temple to pray. They were so full of joy. They waited. And while they waited, God helped them choose an, another disciple to replace Judas. God help them choose Matthias. 
and now they were 12. The disciples were gathered in their upper room and suddenly a great and mighty wind filled the house. It was the Holy Spirit. The disciples were full of its power. It felt like they were on fire. Their tongues burned in their mouths. In their joy and excitement, they rushed out onto the streets to tell everyone. The streets were full of people from many different countries who were in Jerusalem at the time, who spoke many different languages. And yet, they could see that God had come very close to the disciples and that the disciples had come very close to God. And though they spoke different languages, they could understand everything that the disciples were saying. It didn't matter any longer that people spoke different languages. They could all hear the good news and the story. Well, the disciples were now apostles and they went out into all the world to tell the story of Jesus. So I wonder, what part of the story you like the best? I wonder what part of the story is the most important. Mm -hmm. Wonder. I wonder where you are in this story. What part of the story is about you? This part? Or these parts? I wonder, where are you in the story? And I wonder, is there anything we can take away from this story and all have all the story we need? What about if I take this part away? I wonder what would be different. I wonder why it's here. Hmm. What if I take this part out? Jerusalem and the room. Hmm. Or maybe we could take these disciples out. Oh, hmm. I wonder if we could have used people of God instead. Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Thank you for being with us in the circle today for the mystery of Pentecost. And now it's time for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Thanks for being with us in the circle. Have a great week. Hope to see you next week. Bye.